All right, here's our video today. A Star is Born, not the not the movie, not the '76 movie, and not the '54 movie with Judy Garland. No, this is the origin of our sun, how our sun came to be. And our sun is a yellow dwarf. It's a G-type star. It's a small star. It's not smaller than a red dwarf, but it's a yellow star, yellow dwarf, and it was born 4.6 billion years ago. So let's write that, 4.6 billion years ago. And that may seem a lot, and it is a lot for us. But the Milky Way is over 13 billion, 13.6 billion years old. So we needed stars that were born before our sun, many billion years before our sun, exploding that's the simplest thing we needed a star to go supernova or many stars to go supernova way before our sun was born and that those supernovas would seed the universe seeding the universe with all the elements that are inside us the stardust inside of us the oxygen the nitrogen the carbon and so this massive cloud massive molecular cloud, a solar nebula, composed of hydrogen and helium and silicates and so forth, iron, oxygen, just keep naming the elements. It would move through the solar system, move through the galaxy, I mean. Let's take a picture of that. Well, let's not take a picture because we, we weren't around all that billions of years ago. But, and again, this is what it may have looked like, this massive molecular cloud moving through the galaxy, moving through our galaxy, right? There's no evidence that any clouds would have moved from another galaxy like Andromeda, which is about 2.5 million light years away, maybe too far for clouds, clouds to disperse. So I said this cloud, this molecular cloud, and it could be many clouds just bumping into each other, they would have had mostly hydrogen. So if I just let's get our let's get our pen working here. So this cloud would have been mostly maybe seventy to ninety percent hydrogen, and not just hydrogen, but a hydrogen molecule H two. And of course, they would have had also hydrogen in it too. So H two means just two hydrogen atoms together which is more stable and a stronger bond. So they would add hydrogen. And by the way, hydrogen is the most abundant element in the universe by far. And of course, the second most abundant would have been helium. So helium would have been in there. And then, of course, there would have been dust. And the dust inside here would have been mostly silicates. And we'll write that down, silicates. And silicates are, you know, well, we have oxygen, part of it. So we'll write down O. O for oxygen. Let's get another. Let's get another color going here. Let's see if green works. And also, so you know, we'll put an arrow over here. So we had oxygen and uh, silicon, right? So take a right silicon. See if it works. Silicon, silicon. There it is. Those are the silicates. And also carbon, right? Because we are carbon-based life forms. Anything with organic chemistry would have carbon in it. And so. This cloud, where did it come from? So let's look at this. All right, so here's the, we don't know where it came from. Or, and again, it could have been more than just one cloud. It could have been clouds bumping into each other over millions and millions of years. So we're here. This is where we are today. Our little solar system, by the way. It's about 27,000 light years from the center, a lot further to the edge. But so these clouds could have came from an exploding star here or here or here or here, anywhere. Or all those places. And they would have come together by stellar winds and shock waves and eventually would have come together in the area where we are. And made our little sun. By the way, going back to the silicates, they are the most abundant class of minerals that we have on Earth. And you may know them as quartz and feldspar and mica and so forth. And the silicates, they do combine. They like to combine with iron and magnesium and stuff. And all that that we have inside of us and need. And that 
H2, which I said, by the way, is also called dihydrogen. And when H2, you know, you have two molecules of hydrogen bonding with oxygen, you will get dihydrogen monoxide, which is just simply water. So this cloud, if, let's go back to the cloud. Here's H2, by the way, hydrogen. It's all in the cloud, right? Even today in our technology. So as this cloud moved in and got hotter and hotter, it would collapse under its own weight, its own gravity. And the center would become hotter and hotter and spinning and flattening and creating this protoplanetary disk, this solar nebula. It would look something like this. Perhaps something like that, right? So you have the, in the center getting hotter and hotter and spinning and rotating, and that's where the sun is forming. And the outer edge, you see all this dust, this, this these grains of carbon and nitrogen and other material, iron and gold, you know, all that stuff is, they're forming these proto planets because it's flattening out. The gravity will flatten this out, become a rotating disk. In a sense, as the sun is forming, other planets would be forming also. I think Jupiter is probably one of the first planets that was forming, grabbing up other dust and debris as the sun was spinning, being a proto star in its own. So as millions and years pass, these as rock and ice and other debris forming these planet, these very small planets, uh, not quite planets, and again with gravity and slowly forming, they would make the planets we have today. And it would take millions of years to clean it out, to clean out the system, because even on Earth, right there, we, there's a, this idea that there was a planet called Thea. That, smashed, that may have smashed into Earth and became our moon many, many billions of years ago. So the whole, if you think about the solar system forming and the sun forming, it would have been a very violent time as the planets were forming and as the sun was forming and cleaning out the solar system as we know today. You know, so these little Thing. There might have been thousands of them, like we'll just circle them, like these little planetesimals, right? These things bumping into each other, like the game asteroids, and everything is just smashing into each other. And, and again, the gravity is making them get bigger and bigger and bigger. And as the sun keeps spinning, spinning and spinning and forming its own star now, fusing hydrogen into the helium, which it's still doing today. That's basically what a star is. It fuses hydrogen into helium. All right, and of course, this is just a little model of our solar system today, and it's not even close to, this is just all going all the way to, we have Uranus and Neptune, and they're just throwing in Pluto, which is not a planet. And of course, we have the, what you don't see is the Kuiper belt and the uh, Oort cloud. You don't see that. So the universe is much bigger than this model is showing. And again, there's our sun now, and we have somewhat of a cleared solar system as the sun continuing, as it has done 4.6 billion years ago, fusing four hydrogens into helium, it will continue to do that probably for another 5 billion years. And that's another story. All right, that's our video for today.